go back a couple of years now, he's Sean Wayne's leaving. Adrian Lamb's coming in as a kind of uh, setup man for Sean Edwards. Sean Edwards doesn't come. Adrian Lamb takes the job on full time. Midway through last season, Leeds get rid of David Ferner. At a similar time, Wigan could obviously have partly come in with Adrian Lamb, but they go on and win the League Leaders' Shield this year, get to the grand final. Tell us about the job he's done and what kind of a coach you, you see from the sidelines. Yeah, well, when he came in, you, you're right. He, he was in an awkward position from the start, wasn't he? He had to kind of warm the seat, basically, for Sean Edwards. And then there was all that controversy about Edwards' U-turn, and he had to weather all of that. Um, didn't do too bad last season. And it was almost a little bit of a transitional season as well, with Bateman and Tompkins leaving, and obviously the loss of, the loss of Sean Wayne. Um, and then he was under the cosh a little bit this year to kind of... I remember Ian Lennigan saying a few years ago that he expected a trophy every other year. And that was a directive to Sean Wayne, which I always thought was a bit of a hard yardstick, a high yardstick for any coach, to be honest, in a, in a Super League with a salary cap. Um, but that was it. You know, he made no bones about it. I mean, towards the end of Wayne's tenure, it almost became a, a situation where he had to win a trophy every other year and do it in a particular style, which I thought was definitely a, a, a very a very hard thing to ask. Um, with Lamb, the thing that I, I was looking forward to seeing was he, he, the way he, he was promised to make him a little bit more attractive, play a bit more of a flamboyant style, a bit more off the cuff, switching the halfback so he could go left and right. And what's impressed me more hasn't even been that. It's just been the, the way, firstly, he's kept his composure and cool. You know, you've got to remember when Wigan got stuffed at London, early last year, early into his reign. It, he kept his composure then when all the Sean Edwards thing went on. He, he kept his composure then. And, and, and the other thing I'll, I've, I've liked about him has been the way he's promoted the youth players at Wigan and he's brought them through and kept them in there. You know, a, a lot is made of the fact that there's two marquee players. Wigan have got George Burgess on board. But he's played, what, seven games this year. It, it, meanwhile, you've got Ollie Partington starting in the front row with Joe Bullock, who was recruited from Barrow and... You know, a list of others, Smithies, Joe Shorrocks, Liam Burns, who have all come through and, and, and kept the place, warranted a place. And he's not been a... I, there was always that concern with him coming in for a short time. He might not have been as keen to continue what Wayne had done. And, um, and that's really been pleasing for me to see that he has. We need to talk about uh, a key man who's going to obviously play his last game uh, this weekend for Wigan, and that's Sean O'Loughlin. Phil, you've watched... His whole career, I guess, in the the cherry and white. How important? Well, it's a, a daft question. We all know the answer. But t t talk to us about Sean O'Loughlin. I don't need to ask a question. Tell us about it. <laughs> you know, I was playing a scandal. I'm only kidding, obviously. Uh, do you know what? Uh, on his for his last game on Friday or Thursday, sorry, uh, at the DW, I dug up the um, the match report from his debut and my introduction. He was in the opening line. It was something along the lines of. Between the enterprise of Jason Smith and the finesse of Brett Dallas, a reluctant star announced himself last night. And, um, and, and it sounds almost prophetic that I would do that, but honestly, the amount of fringe players who I've declared as the next superstar who've only played two more games is, is ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, but I managed to get that one right. He, um, he's still that reluctant star, isn't he? He, he just... I've just done a piece of a grand final program and I just thought I'd just check his, um, his social media. And I think my last post on, on Twitter was about six weeks ago. And even that was just sharing a rugby league curves initiative. You know, he's just not one for the limelight. The, the biggest, I spoke to Moz last week when he announced his retirement and Moz said that as much as we all rate him, the players put him on another level. And he said, uh, the, the best example of that was that uh, we don't see... <sighs> No, 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 not how hard he hits and things like that, but but also the, the confidence he gives the, the teammates. And also, the, I'll flip it on its head, the confidence it gives the opposition when he's absent. He says, we don't see that, you know, and um, it's been hard trying to find anyone to say anything bad about him in his last few weeks, isn't it? <laughs> but he's deserved everything that, that comes his way. I mean, I've been watching his career for nearly 19 years. The impact he has on that side, the influence he has, is just incredible. And 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 for me to stay loyal in the professional era, when he had so many options to go to the NRL, spoken to so many clubs, linked with so many clubs over the years, but to stay loyal to one club, your hometown club, 
in this era for me just it puts him right up there it's it's hard it's dangerous to to rate somebody's legacy so soon and, and when it's raw but uh, um but I, I think there's no there's no risk that he will go down as, as one of Wigan's all-time greats well, I think there's two things about him. I think the first thing is we've seen a lot of great players. Uh, we've seen a lot of players who we would deem to be our favourite players. But there are certain players that come along, and there aren't many of them, who actively change games the minute they take a hand in them. And, you know, whether it's the first 15 minutes of a game, whether it's coming off a bench, whether it's the crucial last five minutes, you always look to a certain player who is associated with the certain club who is going to make the right play, who's going to turn that game around. You know, fortunate enough to see Ellery Hanley at his pomp. He was one of them. You knew whenever he got the ball and it was that decisive moment in a game, he was going to provide it. Uh, you looked at Wally Lewis in the international arena. I think, you know, whenever Great Britain were looking like they were going to win a test match or it got to that point where suddenly Australia were under pressure, Wally Lewis would do something. Uh, to, to the same extent, Darren Lockyer might as well. There are there are very few players that define matches by what they do. Sean O'Loughlin is one of them. There is absolutely no doubt that every fan of every club would say they knew he was going to do something when it really mattered in the biggest of big games. And that that is the mark of not just being a great player, but being one of the greatest players. I think the the other thing is, talking from a perspective of when he could have left, you ask why clubs would be interested in taking him. And, and there is no doubt that two years ago when Kevin Sinfield wanted to rebuild whatever culture is in a sports dressing room, the one player he wanted to bring in um, was Sean O'Loughlin. And, and, and it wasn't just paper talk at the time. There really was something behind it. Um, and what it was was not what he could bring on the field. That I think everybody knew that he was coming towards the end of his career and Injuries were going to take their toll. They wanted him at the club because they knew that having him at the club would change the, the whole direction of the club. It, the, the nearest they could get to Jamie Peacock returning, for example. And again, I think when people within the game start telling you that we need this guy because his influence is so much more than what you see with him in, with a ball in his hand, you realise how special he is. And, and going back to the grand final and why it's apt and appropriate, if we can have Sean O'Loughlin and James Graham on opposite sides going out uh, on this end, you know, field together, that's brilliant because they both deserve it. They, they have been amongst the best we've seen for very different reasons. Uh, but O'Loughlin is the epitome of the modern rugby league player. The fact that he could be in every dream team because there hasn't been a loose forward to surpass him. Even if he'd only played five games that year, you still went, yep, my default position is Sean O'Loughlin has to be the loose forward. That tells you everything. He, he has been the most astonishing servant. I, mean, I almost want to say he's, he's almost the last loose forward in, in, in the way that he plays that, you know, we grew up watching the loose forwards. He, he, they seem to be another, an extra back row, an extra half back these days, but Sean O'Loughlin could do everything. Yeah, I remember a game at Catalan a couple of years ago. I think they were... 17, 18 points down and, and, and Sean O'Loughlin, I think George Williams went off and so he moved to halfback and he literally, what Phil just said is spot on, he literally did just take that game by the scruff of the neck and, and, and got them the win and and um, and Steve McNamara just full of praise afterwards. Even that World Club Challenge last year, Trent Robinson, full of praise for him, wasn't he? Just saying he was the, he was the, you know, the standout player in that World Club Challenge defeat that, that we're going to have against the Roosters. So, yeah, great servant. And as you said, Phil, what a fitting finale. I hope James Graham, I don't know the, the head knock protocols, um, I hope he is playing because that would be the, the fitting send-off, albeit without, um, without any fans there and it's at Hull. 